this this specific interview with Sherry is brought to you by EmployeeEscapePlan.com, www.EmployeeEscapePlan.com. And if you want to get all the problems out of your business, get unstuck, get into the flow, and figure out your marketing, figure out the time-tested principles to be able to succeed in business, I know I've experienced them. I've learned from this man, Joe Nicasio, who founded EmployeeEscapePlan.com. He's worked with mentors like Jay Abraham. He's coached Les Brown in, in business and helping him with his marketing. Amazing dude, and I highly recommend him. And let Joe know that you heard about him from Chris and visit him at www.employeescapeplan.com. There's also some really great um, downloads for free that you can get there to really start accelerating your growth as an uh, entrepreneur, as uh, someone who's breaking free of that corporate life. Just want to let you know that. Go succeed. Now, for the woman of the hour, Ms. Shari James. She's a registered nurse, and she's taken the mystery out of erectile dysfunction and developed a new holistic approach to men's sexual health and performance. The B Firm Erectile Dysfunction Blueprint, trademarked, is a drug-free solution to end the struggle with erectile dysfunction. I think that's what I said there. The drug-free solution is probably one of the most important parts about her message and how she's doing this. I'm super excited to be sharing this with you guys. Borrowing from Shari's experience as a registered nurse, practitioner of the five elements of Chinese medicine, and mastery of Tantra, the B Firm ED Blueprint is a blend of traditional Western medicine and Eastern healing practices, which provides a grounded, accessible, and holistic approach. Shari, are you ready to rock this? Awesome, awesome. You are now live on Becoming Your Greatest Possible Self, and thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to come share with our audience and empower us and make sure that we uh, you know, don't have any of these problems that a lot of people think you know, just comes with life or I have to deal with it or I have to use medicine, uh, I have to use drugs to, to conquer it. And uh, you know, thank you for, for coming on and sharing your wisdom. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, really, I want to dive into your, your journey, how you got to where you are today. But before that, all the special guests who come on the show, we've been asking them this question of with regards to cultivating your inner garden and nurturing that inner garden, the inner self, like how do you approach cultivating your, your inner environment for success, for abundance, for happiness, for peace? Ah, okay. I feel like it's one of those Oprah questions. Yeah. Um, I spend a lot of time in silence, mm. uh, a lot of time in nature and beauty mm. and away from electronics. I meditate every day and being able to hear that fine voice combined with body sensation mm. and having enough awareness to read that is how I guide my life to the next step. And that might be something that warms my heart or lights me up. And that might be a more fiery energy like anger. That's really like passion. Mm. And so I love, uh, I love discovering what the next step is through me through that quiet voice and also through sensation. Wow, that's awesome. Beautiful. I love it. That was, that was a perfect <laughs> answer. And that was, okay. that was so you, you know, you live these <laughs> things and that's, that's the practices and so important to walk the talk. So I love how we just dove right into that. So let's start diving more into your journey and some of the challenges that you had to overcome to get to this person who you are today and you know like all the all the good that you're doing for for men and you're connected with them you intimately know and understand them and you're able to make a difference for them but i'm sure things weren't always this easy or you weren't always so familiar with this process and men in general and human beings in general so how did that all evolve um well first of all it's still not easy mm. <laughs> um, because I'm bringing something new forth mm -hmm. that's going against how men have been programmed. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, there's challenges every single week mm -hmm. and I'm in the mindset now of bring it, mm -hmm. bring it on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, so now the journey, so this is the first time I've 
ever talked about my personal journey live. And I'm so, I'm so happy that it's with you. I love your energy and uh, there's something very heart centered about you that feels really good. And I want to thank you for having me on and uh, getting my grassroots campaign of getting this information out there. Mm -hmm. So the journey, (laughs) Um, when I was uh, like a little girl, you know, you think about who do I want to be? And I really, I had like healing tendencies Mm -hmm. and I wanted to be a veterinarian but I'm allergic to most animals. <laughs> so that one didn't really work out. Um, so it's, it's interesting how the core of healer has shown through all these years and now it's being expressed in a different way. Um, so I'm going to start the story at 1992. Okay. And that's when I started nursing school and did a two-year program, became a registered nurse simultaneously i also uh started dancing as a stripper Mm -hmm. in canada and that's really where you know my first i guess you could say rudimentary introduction to working with sexual energy began Mm -hmm. you know it it began on a very base level Mm -hmm. and that's also where i was allowed into the world of you know men's desires Mm -hmm. Um, men are a lot more free in that environment. And also you get to see how men are different when they're just by themselves or if they're in a pack. So do you want me to, and you can feel free to ask me any questions. I will. I will. Like I'm, I'm trusting you're going to share exactly what needs to come out and yes, yes, please share whatever specifics you noticed, uh, patterns. Absolutely. Give us the gold. Okay. Um, So when men are in a pack, Mm -hmm. what I've realized is there's always a leader and the leader tends to be, I would, I would say like the one that gives the most, the other guys, the most shit. Mm. Right. (laughs) So there, there's, there's usually like a funny quality about the leader. Mm -hmm. And so what I discovered when I was uh, dancing is that if I would approach a group of guys, you know, which is like approaching a wolf pack. Mm-hmm. in that environment, if I could take down the leader, mm. if I could rip him apart and have a lot of fun and be funny, yeah. then all the guys would buy dances. Wow. And so I, I started to learn, you know, these interesting observations and skills when it came to uh, working with men. Wow. That's awesome. That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And then that actually, actually, we're going to get to the, maybe the comedy portion of the story too, but that, I think that's actually the beginnings of my adventures in comedy because I think, I think men are so funny, (laughs) you know, and not to laugh at them, but they're, they're really funny, right? you know? Um, So being in that environment taught me a lot about comedy too, and you know, how to develop a strong suit. So my other uh, strong suit was I'm a very good listener. And I've always kind of had like a calm, you know, nature and a non-judgmental nature. So guys would really open up to me and I listened. And I, what I did is I started um, charging by the hour, like a therapist would, because they like to talk to me so much. And then I would just kind of sprinkle in, you know, dances here and there. Totally. Um, and it's, it's funny because women say that guys don't really want to talk a lot. And do you, have you heard that? Yeah, of course. Of course I've heard that, but it's like, they don't, they don't know how to express themselves. They don't know how to get the message out. They don't know how to be, how to feel safe and, and comfortable to share it. Right. I'm going to give you a different perspective. Okay. All right. Yeah. I would say that women don't know how to be quiet. Hmm. So <laughs> you're like, mm. wow. yeah. So, um, so what I learned in that, you know, that period of my journey is if I was quiet and still mm. and gave a guy time to express himself, especially on a deeper level. Um, and sometimes, you know, this would be five minutes of silence. Right. This would be, you know, me reflecting something back or asking a question. And there's just like, 
silence, mm. you know, and for me as a woman, I'd be like, oh yeah, well, I felt this way and this yeah. happened and then it made me feel like this, but no, it's, it's just, it's a different, you know, processing center, <laughs> the way that things are processed. And so I would just, just sit there and I would wait. And that's really how I, you know, I think those are the first steps of how I learned to hold space mm. for a man and give him the space to respond. Mm. Yeah. What a blessing. I just felt a shift in your energy there. I'm, I'm diving more into my heart. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I felt that. So as much as men can hold space for women, women can also hold space for men. And it just requires patience and silence. Maybe being topless. <laughs> I love it. But then again, I mean, men, men still pay me to listen to them and my clothes are on. So I guess, I guess, you know. <laughs> well, I, I think you know especially like diving more into this in this story like the juicy parts is like there's such a like there's taboos about society and what what things mean and like shame and guilt and all this stuff around certain actions and behaviors and I know we're like we're moving into a age where people are able to be more freely expressed and a lot of women you know want to like the free the nipple movement and they want to be you know self-expressed or you know i was at that parade in venice really (laughs) i was okay so want me to sidetrack into a yeah let's go (laughs) all right i got a lot i have so many stories around sexuality um being a lover of freedom i was at the free the nipple uh parade in venice two years ago venice beach thousands of people and I had unicorn um, pasties on. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I'll tell you that experience was incredibly freeing. At one point, I went ahead of every, all the other women. And I wanted to just, I wanted to have the experience of complete freedom. Mm-hmm. And I could feel everyone looking at me. And we, what was surprising is that everyone was so respectful thousands of people all walks of life and I didn't feel like any negative energy or, you know, put upon in any way. And it was incredibly freeing to walk down the street in that way. And, um, I loved seeing guys faces because they were so happy. It's like, you could, you could, you know, see that little boy come out like boobies. Oh my God. (laughs) Yeah. It was was really fun and, and really, um, really freeing and very intense too. Wow. That's awesome. And I, and I think, go ahead. No, go ahead. Um, and I think that would also encapsulate my time as a stripper yeah. is that it was that, that pull towards that sense of freedom and creative expression that really was amazing for me. That's beautiful. I'm excited. I'm excited for the transcendence of, of taboos and stigmas and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, like you, you showing up in this space and you're going to get in into more of your story, but you showing up in the space of, Hey, this is where I was. And it like, it doesn't define me. Right. And I don't, I don't like judge myself or make myself wrong for doing these things, like engaging in these kinds of activities. It was just activities, right? There were things, there were actions I took, but it doesn't define the quality of my soul. It doesn't define who I am and the contribution I can make to people, the amount of love that I can express, the amount of space that I can hold for people to show up in their own capacity in their own light. And I think that's like, even, even I'll, I'll share my own challenges. Like I've been challenges, um, been challenged. I had, um, last month in November, I said, I wasn't going to drink any alcohol, wasn't going to, um, drink any caffeine and I wasn't going to masturbate. And I did it for the entire month. And I came up against shame and guilt from people around me, leaders, and also my family. Right. And like, like I, I felt that from them now, that I believe that came up because it was a reflection of stuff that I still had to work on within myself, right? Mm-hmm. And and I, I embrace that and I'm so grateful that there's still stuff to work on and, and I'm recognizing it as a growth opportunity versus something that's like, why me, poor me, victim kind of mentality. 
how did you, I'm just curious for yourself, um, when you came up with shame and guilt, mm -hmm. did that have a particular location in your body? And how did you choose to transmute that or feel that? Yeah, um, particular place in my body. So let's see. So for the for this example, I shared with my parents, right, with my dad um, on a call, and I felt like it was a safe space. And it, it, nothing was said on, on in that moment. But then I got a text later on that, hey, I should really watch what I say. It should be more appropriate about where I, where I share that. And so if, if I take myself back to that moment, I'm like, dad, like you just don't get me. Like why, like why me? Why do I feel like I can't share things with, with my family? Like so it's, it's almost, I don't know, it's almost in my head, like this pressure in my head, like the anger, the boil, the, like the rage almost that kind of, kind of bubbles up. There's more anger. Um, but then the shame of like not, not being able to express myself or being shamed. Um, I think it's like in, in my throat, like to, to constrict more in my throat that I can't share, that I can't be self-expressed, that I can't be free. I want to be able to share whatever's on my mind. And when I feel shamed and, and like guilty, then it's like, uh, you know, like I should probably not do that anymore and just close up, tighten up, get smaller. Okay. Yeah. What I'm hearing is frustrated love mm. and that you want to be seen and heard fully. Yes. Yes. And loved for who you are and what you're up to in the world. You hear correctly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's awesome. Thank you for, for reflecting that back to me, what I'm, what I'm really committed to and what I care about. Appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. It shows that's a passion point for you. Yeah. Awesome. So let's keep diving into your journey uh, because I know you got more gold. So after this period of time, you started your your uh, nursing degree and you were dancing, and then what else? What else evolved after that? Um, so what? So a few notes on the nursing is that I was doing both simultaneously, mm -hmm. and um, I worked on diabetic and post open heart. Mm -hmm. So that's when I got really familiar with the circulatory system, mm -hmm. and then I could also see people's habits and lifestyle choices and how that was landing them in the hospital. So that's where that piece in particular started. Mm -hmm. um, I did uh, leave becoming, I did leave the, uh, the RN profession. Mm -hmm. I keep my license up because I worked very hard for that, wow. but um, I was only in it for about three years mm -hmm. and I went back to stripping mm -hmm. because I liked it even more. Yeah, I, it just was um, a beautiful creative expression for me. Yeah. And um, so after that, mm. uh, after real, stripping, real quick, what what values were fulfilled for you when you were doing that? Yes, creative expression, but was did you like contribution or receiving like admiration? Was there anything else that you discovered that you really enjoyed about those experiences? I would say that my highest value overall is freedom. Mm. And so it, that provided that value for me. It was the freedom of expression, freedom over my schedule, um, to not have a ceiling on me financially, hmm. to have you know financial freedom to create as much as I wanted. So, yeah, yeah and, really and you cool. get you got to empower other men to feel free as well, right? You created a space ah, of freedom, yeah. and you got I didn't to share it that way. But yes, so, absolutely, yeah. Because yeah. 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 like what you value, you value giving that to other people as well. You know, like hmm. if you value freedom, you want everyone around you to have freedom too. <laughs> I, I never thought about that, but you're yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. So All right. Keep going. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this is awesome. So this is awesome. the next piece of the puzzle is, um, I love the way I describe this. So at, the, so at this point, I'm living in Los Angeles and I was, you know, commuting to Vegas and stripping there and at my gym, Gold's Gym Venice. <laughs> I, the, the Mecca, I, um, I kind of just bumped into this, this group of women, you know, that were very, uh, self-expressed mm -hmm. and they adopted me into their underground sorority where they trained me in the erotic arts. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that was the next piece of this puzzle. And so I left dancing and then I started doing, um, erotic massage. Mm -hmm. And what that did is it provided me with a more intimate container mm -hmm. and then I could get to know, you know, men on a much deeper level. There was no loud music and it was in a room and then I could 
really see firsthand, you know, what was going on physically mm-hmm. and, you know, where guys um, consciousness was at as well. So I got to go even deeper with my um, talks with men and just, um, just, I I think overall it, it gave me more compassion Mm -hmm. because I learned that men, uh, you don't hear this as much you do now, but back when I started that a lot of men have been sexually abused. Mm -hmm. And I think that's not something a lot of women are aware of, Mm -hmm. of, of how much that's prevalent And then I got to hear more about how much uh, responsibility and pressure is on men Mm -hmm. and what that does to them when they're doing something for everyone else and not really for themselves Mm -hmm. and how that can actually be a very objectifying experience for them. And we hear a lot about that, about both sides, male and female, mm-hmm. um, you know, feeling like they got all this pressure. Moms have to take care of the family and they have like so much pressure on them. And then dads, you know, typically it's been dads are the bre- breadwinners, although that, that stereotype is going yeah, out the window at, at this point. Um, but, you know, dads and men, like they feel like they have to build a legacy, you know, they have mm-hmm. to leave a legacy like their 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 lineage is on the line. And there's a lot of pressure behind that. To, to, to live a life that matters. Yeah. And I think as a woman, I, I, I did not have an appreciation for the level of pressure and responsibility that is also on men mm. in, in a different way that it would be on a woman. So again, it's like more, more compassion and more empathy was, mm. was developing during that time. Yeah. That's awesome. Cool. Cool. So you started doing that. And then Mm -hmm. what, what did you, what were the biggest takeaways or what did you transition into next? Um, I think the biggest takeaways are, uh, you know, what I just shared. Mm -hmm. And then also that's, that's at a point where I started developing the ability to move sexual energy Mm -hmm. and to actually use, um, to access Mm -hmm. and then (laughs) to access. Right. Right. And then, and then, (laughs) move, uh, move sexual energy up and around the body Mm. and use that actually as a tool for healing. And that's just something that evolved and came to me naturally. That's awesome. So were you, were you like, so you, you had them in this vulnerable position, you arouse them sexually, and then you could channel that energy into certain parts of their body to be able to like break through or unblock or heal, um, whatever it is that they were dealing with. And, and like, you ask them questions, like you asked me, you know, when, where did you feel that? Where did you feel these things? Like, did you combine therapy with massage or how did that work? Yeah. Again, yeah. it's like, I can't get away from being a healer. Yeah, <laughs> I could yeah. be in line at the bank and I guess be healing. Right. Um, so I want to make a, a distinction around here between sexuality and sensuality. Okay. So the erotic aspect of the industry is mm. a sensual energy. And the way I would define essential energy is it's the combination of sexual energy and heart. Mm. So when you become a woman who's uh, consistently connected, you're able to channel that energy through your hands into your clients. And then they're able to, to feel that they're able to get that heart activation. So, so that's where I just want to create a distinction around that. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. I love it. Cool. All right. So <laughs> the next piece is, um, I think what piece is next, My I've, I've done so much. It's like swirling. Uh, okay. And so, you could, you could speak to that now or wait till, till the end about like how it's been, you know, like all over the place, your journey, you never really like knew where you were going, but like you always felt that next step calling you forward. Right. I know we, we talked about that in our conversation earlier, but yeah. this might, might be better to cover that in a couple more points, and <laughs> a couple more transitions. I didn't know I was on a calling. Right. <laughs> Basically. Right. Right. And, and when I look back, I'm like, oh, that's an initiation. That's an initiation. Yeah. Okay. So let's go on to the third initiation. Yeah. And that would be the Kundalini awakening. Mm. This is the game changer. Mm. Um, I, I was, I was having some emotional pain and some fear and I went to a male healer and we did some breath work and he said, look into my eyes. And I did. And all of a sudden um, I lost my sense of self Mm. and my heart center uh, burst open and expanded. And I was completely gone. 
mm-hmm. this, um, I, the only, like, so a laughter came out of me that I've never heard before. Wow. It wasn't my laughter. It was like the universe was laughing through me. Mm. And I'll never forget that sound. <laughs> um, and, I, and simultaneously, I was like catapulted somewhere. Yeah. And where I was, there was DNA strands. There was this matrix language. Mm-hmm. Um, and eventually, I came into my body. I somehow drove, drove home. And I stayed in that blissful state for a good week. Mm-hmm. And at that time... Um, at that time, I was actually a comedy writer in Hollywood and had, you know, rock presentation and was doing the rounds to studios. And I got a very clear message that said, you're a healer. And so I stopped, you know, I called my manager. I'm like, I'm, you know, I'm shifting gears. I'm not going to do comedy anymore. And I, um, I didn't know what it meant to be a healer, really. Like professionally, I never tried to do that. And all of a sudden, I got a, a call from this woman I met at the gym years ago. And she said, I need to see you. Um, I don't know what you charge, but I need to see you. Mm-hmm. And I just thought, oh my God, I don't know what I, I don't even know what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. I, I don't even know what I charge. And then I just said, $40. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what to say. And I scheduled her. <laughs> And when she showed up, I instantly, you know, knew what to do. And it had something to do with sexuality. Um, And from that point forward, men, women, and couples just started showing up in my life to um, deal with sexual healing. And at the same time, when you have a Kundalini awakening, you, you know, you get gifts that come with it. And I got like the Tantra download. (laughs) So it's like, you're going to be a healer. You're going to work with sexuality. You're just going to be in no Tantra. You're embodied and go. Hmm. So, so that's, so that's what I did. And I was, so I was working with men, women, and couples, and I could see that men were really struggling with ED. Hmm. They were, they were, you know, showing up with that problem and they didn't want to take a pill or that the pill had side effects um, and I, you know, initially I just thought, oh my God, I have, I have no idea what to do with this. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you <laughs> the very first discovery with my process, this mm-hmm. might sound kind of funny, but, uh, with each session, I created my own meditation that helped people drop into their body very quickly and relax. Mm-hmm. So, um, be, in the beginning of each session, I would just do that meditation. It's about 10, 12 minutes. And I would notice guys, you know, kind of shifting their pants Mm -hmm. (laughs) down below. And I'm like, that's weird. And then afterwards they would say, oh my God, you know, I got aroused during your meditation. And and it wasn't sexy at all, right? Right. It's just breathing and, you know, it's, there's nothing sexy about it. And, and these were guys that suffered from ED and I thought, okay, something's going on here. Um, Mm -hmm. And that's when. I started this whole process is from a med- meditation and seeing what arose, right. you know, from that meditation. <laughs> You're full of puns. I'm catching them all. <laughs> it, <I'm> just- <laughs> in my business, it's impossible to not have puns. It's absolutely like everything that comes out of my mouth, right? like everything I say is a pun. Yes. So, I know it's impossible. <laughs> I'm, are you, I'm hoping to get you to blush <laughs> soon. soon. <laughs> All right, I'm going to work on that. Um, yeah. So that was really uh, the first piece in that journey. And also I could see, you know, the impact that it had on marriages and relationships. I could see the female half of it and they, Oh my God, my guy's not attracted to me and they would get insecure and, Oh, all these problems. Um, and so those were the, those were the very, the beginning stages. And that was, I say about eight years ago and I just kind of slowly, you know, I've been just doing other things as well. Um, I did stand up comedy and, you know, like I do kind of things that I think are fun to stretch myself. Um, I studied contract law for a year. Wow. I've taught hula hoop classes. So I, I do other things. Um, but this particular program is something I developed over an eight year period. And I, I'm making a very big claim. 
right? To say that I've created a proven system that will, I mean, legally, I don't want to say cure, um, but, you know, uh, <laughs> fix erectile dysfunction, that, that's, a, that's a big claim to make. And it's something I take very seriously. So it was a very slow development and I, I tackled it from every single angle imaginable and I left no stone unturned. Mm. And that's how it was basically born is um, just knowing Western medicine and having an education in that and just understanding, you know, how the body works, the circulatory system in particular, because that's what. Um, I was doing was post open heart, you know, which I got special training for, and then also diabetics. So those are two big areas where you're dealing with circulation. And then again, just another passion for fun. I studied uh, the five elements of Chinese medicine. So, and then Tantra. So I basically created like a, a template of each, and then I just tackle everything from that perspective. And, um, also, after my Kundalini awakening, I became highly, highly intuitive. Mm. And so I'm able to really look at someone and get like this holographic image of them. Mm. And I can tell which category they fall in for their issue. Wow. That's awesome. <laughs> superpowers. <laughs> I love them. I love yeah, them. Yeah, definitely superpowers. Yes. Yes. I love it. Cool. So you developed this program. Now, like, what are you doing to share it? How is it evolving? You know, I know you sent me a testimonial. Explain a little bit more about what people go through and the results that they can experience. You know, I know mm -hmm. you said fix, but like a little bit more specific. Okay. Um, so it's right now it's a 13 week program. I'm mm -hmm. always tweaking and changing. Evolving, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so right <clears throat> today it's 13 weeks. Tomorrow yeah. it can be 12 weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, but basically I, well, you know, what I did is I wrote out some case studies here mm -hmm. that I thought would be good to talk about. Cool. Cause you saw the one, um, the young man that had the porn addiction. Mm -hmm. I, think I sent you that one, right? Yeah. Because, uh, nowadays one out of four guys under the age of 30 has erectile dysfunction and it's porn related. That's crazy. Oh, it's so crazy. I would say that that particular topic in that particular age group is my next burning passion. Hmm. And I'm now creating something specifically for that age group. It's not fully done, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm, it's, yeah, it's definitely been a burn in me. I'm like, okay, this, this age group needs to be served. Yes. So, uh, so I'll tell you um, just going back to even how I discovered this is stress. I would have to say that stress is the, is the number one cause of erectile dysfunction, mm. hands down. Mm. So I'm going to share this case study with you. Okay. So this guy was um, 60 years old. Mm -hmm. He was a business owner. He had a lot of responsibility. <clears throat> he came to me because he wasn't waking up hard in the morning. And then he also wasn't able to get hard with his wife. Mm. And he just, didn't want to take pills, not a pill guy, didn't want to take pills. And for him, what I, what I realized it was hundred percent stress. Mm -hmm. And I would, you know, I'll, I'll do little things to kind of, you know, figure out exactly what's going on. So I might have someone sit still for 10 minutes and not have any distractions. I'll watch how they're breathing. Mm -hmm. And then also I'll watch their body movements. So if there's, if you'd be, you'd be surprised, somebody with high stress, they won't have an awareness of it. So their, their body is in a mode that the tiger is constantly chasing them, wow. but they're so numb. They don't know it. They can't feel it. And it's normal. So with this particular gentleman, I could see that after about two minutes, his hand, his hand would start shaking. His, his legs would start shaking. Like it was visible. And I'm like, oh my God, this is complete nervous system. And then also I saw that his breathing pattern, he was breathing shallow through his mouth. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And that stimulate that that stimulates the nervous system even more. Right. And when someone has a highly stimulated nervous system, which is pretty much most of the population at this point, mm-hmm. um, you're very quick to anger. Your your reactivity to things goes up very high mm-hmm. and very intense. So that's one way you can tell how like where your stress level is is how mm-hmm. reactive you are, and how quickly that escalates to anger. Um, so this guy, you know, when I asked him the stress related questions, you know, sure enough, um, he was very quick to react to anger, even mm-hmm. though he seemed like a very sweet man. You know, I could see that that side of him as well, and so. My focus with him was to reset his nervous system because uh, the, there's two branches of the nervous system that affect a guy getting hard and also ejaculation. Mm. And what's happening with guys nowadays is that they're, um, they're excited, excited, relaxed. Mm. And I have to get them into a mode where they're relaxed, excited, relaxed. Mm. Okay. And that's how the nervous system is going to function at the optimal level. Mm. So I worked with him for several weeks on, you know, just even becoming aware of how he is breathing, um, becoming aware of knowing when he's stressed Mm. and where he feels that in his body. And so by the end of the program, he woke up hard. He was able to have sex with his wife. You know, he was so happy. He's like, can I take you out to lunch? Like, he was, I have good news. I want to share. Like, he was local. Um, So I was able to, you know, work with him one-on-one at my, um, you know, my mountainside retreat. But uh, yeah, so he was so happy. So we went out to lunch. He had this big smile. And he's like, my wife thinks I'm on Viagra. She thinks I'm up to something. And because everything was working. So with him, it was really, you know, that, that nervous system piece was really huge. Hmm. Wow. That's awesome. And I, I hear that it, being aware, right? Awareness is the mm-hmm. first step. And a lot of people are in so such deep subconscious, unconscious programming that mm-hmm. they can't even tell, you know, they're, they're deep in the stuff, like the blinders like this, that's all they know. It's like a fish, you know, you try to pull a, uh, like tell a fish he's in water. He's like, what are you talking about? But you pull him out of water. He's like, Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Know? They're shocked to find out how they're breathing. Yeah. I'm like, really? I'm breathing through my mouth or like, or that they're not breathing. Yeah. Like, did you know that you just held your breath for like five seconds? Really? I hold my breath. Like they don't know. I mean, I've been on a particular path my whole life with mm-hmm. the breathing and yoga and meditation. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I'm aware and it's still, you know, it's still a process for me to maintain. Totally. Totally. So, and, yeah. So, and I also heard that the uh, you know the relaxed, excited, relaxed. Mm-hmm. That's basically one like having nurturing and self care for ourselves, doing things that relax us. Whether it's massages, whether it's meditation, whether it's you know just laying out in the backyard, laying in a recliner, enjoying ourselves, but not like getting lost in something else like TV or something, but like, cause that's stimulating too, right? Like watching TV that can uh, stimulate us, but more so focusing on on. Like, how am I, how do I want to show up? How do I feel right now? And processing those emotions and being aware so that we can relax. Like we have to be aware of what is tense, what is tight, what is, you know, pulling at us so that we can get to that state of relaxation. What I'm seeing is very yang lifestyles, hmm. right? Especially with guys, um, cause you're yang. Right. <laughs> so, so it's like, go, 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 do, 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 do. Yes. And it's like, but there's no balance with just hmm. being. Mm. So, yeah, I mean, self-care is really important and relaxation and a meditation practice is really important. Um, So I'll go so far as to say this. I think a lot of times I would say overall that guys are masturbating too much. Mm. And I think that because the end result of masturbation is relaxation, Mm. I think they're using it as a way to relax. Yeah. But I think that there's higher choices that could be used to relax. So you're not constantly spending that energy. And also, so you're not, how can I say? So you're not programming your brain to do that very quickly because then that's going to show up in your sex life with premature ejaculation and lack of control. 
So meditate sometimes instead of masturbate. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yes. Cool. Cool, cool. Okay, so we were talking about case studies. I'm sure you got some more, right? I know. I'm just looking at the time. This is going so fast. Yes, um, yes. Okay. Well, since it's going so fast, I'm going to, I'm going to let you pick a case study. All right. So (laughs) here's the topic. We've got circulation. We've got Mm -hmm. mental, emotional, and sexual energy. Let's do, so mental, emotional, and sexual is one or mental, emotional. I just threw them together for the, so the sake of this conversation, (laughs) circulation, mental, emotional, or sexual energy. Let's do sexual energy. I knew it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> i knew it <laughs> all right um so first i want to you know define my perspective on what sexual energy is okay? so sexual energy is our life force energy mm-hmm. it's our creative energy and in chinese medicine it's stored in our kidneys wow. it's our chi so the kidneys i look at the kidneys like our gas tank So I will say this, when someone has very severe erectile dysfunction and they've spent so much money, Mm -hmm. the final reserve of where that sexual energy lives in the body is in the bones. Yeah, a little bit of trivia for you. (laughs) All right, so sexual energy. All right, so this case study is, um, so this guy is 48 and he is in, probably the happiest long-term relationship I've ever heard of in my life. The most loving. He thinks his wife is so beautiful and I've seen a picture of her and I have to agree. And um, they've been married for over 20 years and he wasn't, um, they, they got into a thing where he wasn't getting aroused with her Mm. and it was putting their marriage in jeopardy because he's like, what's going on? What's going on? Like, I'm attracted to her. She's beautiful. We have, we're having a great sex life. Like what's happening. And then she was going, oh my God, it's me. You're not attracted to me. Our marriage is in jeopardy. And then, you know, any kind of like low self-esteem things with her was kicking up. And I, you know, I reviewed the case and I thought he's exhausted. He's exhausted. And what was happening is that he was turning to porn because it was quick and easy. And to have to perform sexually was work. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh my God, I gotta, I gotta run my company. I gotta take care of this. I gotta take care of that. And now at the end of the night, I have to perform. Mm. So I was able to show him that it was indeed his energy was completely tapped. So in that case, what I had to do is work on like filling his tank, Mm -hmm. filling his kidney tank, you could say. Mm -hmm. And um, one thing we had to really work on was his sleep. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he would only get like two hours a night, five hours a night and sleep was a big issue. So we had to work on his sleep And also, again, resetting his nervous system. There's no one that goes through my program that doesn't need their nervous system reset. Hmm. So everyone gets that because everybody needs that. So we had to reset his nervous system and also uh, cut back on the amount of times. Well, first of all, get rid of porn completely. Mm -hmm. And which is not as easy as people might think. Um, Challenge. It's it's intense. Mm -hmm. It's intense. It's like, it's like coming off crack, you know, and then I'm the mean person that's saying, no, absolutely not. You cannot do it. And yeah, this is where, this is where you really want to coach. (laughs) (laughs) This is, yeah, this is where like, I can be cute and fun and loving, but this is where I like, I I crack the whip. Oh yeah. 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 And, and you know, no one likes me when I do that Mm -hmm. and I'm okay with that. Because when they're on the other side of it, it's, it's all worth it. And I get the thank you then. So in this particular case, um, sure enough, 
he started getting hard with his wife again and I started having an active sex life. Um, and then I also taught him some things you can do as a couple to get into <clears throat> relaxed arousal. Mm. So my, my favorite energy sexually is relaxed arousal. Mm. And when I really think, and this is the tantric piece. So when I really, when I think about tantra, for me, it's the energy of relaxed arousal. Mm. You're not approaching sexuality, like all like <laughs> jacked up, like, right. like, for, for a man, it's like you're embodied, you're present, you're connected to your breath. Mm. And that male presence, that, that sexual male presence is so powerful for a woman. And that's what really allows her to surrender more deeply. Mm. And the more that a woman is able to relax and surrender, the bigger experience of orgasm she has. So I would even say that a man's presence alone impacts what level of orgasm his woman is having. Wow. That's awesome. I love this. This is gold. <laughs> this is the secrets to life. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I think at some point we're going to have to just literally do a whole hour on the porn issue. Yes. Because I'm like, that fire is growing in me. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's stay on topic right now. We'll definitely get you back on. Um, but you know, beginning to wrap up, what, yeah. what is it that really people, um, need to need to show up in this interview with right now? What commitment do they need to make? What mindset shift is, is like you, you're so committed that they receive this knowledge. What is that? What is the, the shift, the way of being showing up in the world? I want, okay, so I want men to know that these tools exist that I've mm -hmm. created to empower you 100%, yeah. to not give your power away to a pill, to not think that this is natural or, oh, I'm getting older. That, that doesn't mm -hmm. have to be true at all, nor should it be true. So I think what I, as if a man's watching this, you know, what I would want you to take away is, empower yourself to cure this and fix this and and the the pill it can be beautiful in certain circumstances um, especially after certain types of surgery mm -hmm. um, but that would be my absolute last resort i would i would really i would i would guess like i'd want you to understand that your penis is a reflection of your overall health and if you're not waking up hard, something's going on and that's a warning sign. Hmm. So do anything, you know, whether it's call me, I mean, obviously that'd be great, but um, to really, really take a look at your overall health and your overall being and how you're caring for your body hmm. and just know that the tools exist for you to completely empower yourself, hmm. for you to cure this and for you to be proactive in this. So I, I, I heard something there. You said it multiple times, but I kind of stepped over it. Um, waking up hard. Like, is that something that every man like is supposed to do? Like, is that, is that like, like why when you wake up, should you be hard? Okay. So there's a couple different components to this. Okay. So this is the first thing that I look for mm -hmm. because this tells me several things about you. And I'm going to say this, um, if you're under 30, you should really be waking up hard every day. Right. If you're under 50, I'm going to say five days a week, 50 and over. I think you can get away with like three days a week. Mm -hmm. So the penis is the overall barometer of a man's health. And mm -hmm. that's a quote from Dr. Oz. So when a guy is not waking up hard, what that points to for me is he's mismanaged his energy. Mm -hmm. Also, we need to look at circulation. If there's, if there's a circulation decrease in the heart, mm -hmm. and then we also need to look at a nervous system and get you out of that, um, hi, you know, hyper mode and get you mm -hmm. more into the, the parasympathetic, the calm mode. So there's, there's three components, there's like different components that tell me different things. I have to talk to someone to kind of analyze right. which one I think it is, but I think that's the biggest thing is that's telling you something. 
-hmm. because when you're waking up hard and full of energy Mm -hmm. and virile and ready to take on the day, you're going to have the confidence to do so. And there is something I also, you know, really learned about men and, and see men is that for me, it's like men get themselves excited, right? They get themselves excited and hard and then they project themselves into the world. Hmm. And so when you're, you know, kind of waking up like this, you're, you're just, you're not, you're not really fully being, you know, as powerful as you can be as a man and, and getting out into the world. Yeah. It's awesome. Beautiful. And before we jump into, um, you know, I want people to know how to stay connected with you. What do you want them to do next? Um, you also mentioned on, on a conversation that we had, the, our first conversation, that people who go through your programs, like halfway through or whatever, at a certain point, they start like getting into relationships more. They start attracting relationships. They start going after the, the woman um, that they want more. I'm curious if you have anything to share about that or like... That's a hundred percent accidental. I'm Mm. (laughs) it's so, I mean, I, that's not part of my program. I mean, we discuss those things and we discuss how to, you know, kind of polarize the opposite sex in a positive way. Mm -hmm. I don't tell anyone to date or anything like that, but I have noticed like the halfway and a little bit over all of a sudden I'm like, Hey, I went on this date or I'm dating or I'm dating. I'm like, really like and so i'm just seeing a trend yeah and then that's you know that's very exciting for me because it's awesome i do this work because i love men and i love women and anytime i can um you know help a man be better Mm -hmm. then i'm serving women and inadvertently but yeah so that's it's not part of the program ironically but it's a side effect it's a potential potential side effect (laughs) Yeah, a positive, positive side effect, yeah. <laughs> positive result, uh, impact. You know, there's probably Accidental better words. Accidental positive result. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> better than side effect. Side effect yes. is is more negatively yeah. connotated. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. So, how do people stay connected with you? What do you want them to do next? Okay. Well, if you want to learn more and schedule a consultation, you can go to my website, which is architecture of pleasure.com and if you go on the coaching tab and scroll down you can look at some of what the coaching looks like and um, then there's a little scheduling link so you can just schedule with me online and even though I'm you know I'm personally north of Los Angeles I'm happy to like work with people at my retreat Mm -hmm. and I also have 100% success rate working on video like zoom so someone doesn't have to see me in person it's just as effective and also I've been really having more fun on Instagram and, mm. and finding that a good way to communicate. So my Instagram is Sherry James AOP, which is short for architecture of pleasure. Mm-hmm. And that's S H A R I J A M E S A O P on Instagram. Awesome. Sherry, you are a superstar. <laughs> Thank you for all the work that you're doing and the creation. And, you know, I, I mentioned it earlier, but, Sometimes we can't see the journey moving forward. We can't see the path, how it's going to unfold. But like looking back, you can connect all the dots and how it led up to the perfect place. And I appreciate you for, for trusting your intuition and being that leader who, who follows your, your highest self and, and just God and, and your path and just keep going forward courageously, you know, and, and taking life one day at a time. It's amazing to see what you're doing for men. And I'm so excited to see your mission evolve Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, see, see you help more people, um, you know, be free. It's something that you value. It's something I value very, very highly as well. So it's no coincidence why we uh, attracted each other and you're on the show and why we're going to continue growing together and empowering each other for for years and decades to come. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Hope you have the best day ever. Thank you so much. Everyone listening, go visit Sherry's website, follow her, and uh, stay in touch with her because she's awesome and doing some really, really cool, innovative, cutting-edge stuff that's really transforming our world as we know it. Thank you. All right. We'll see you soon, okay? Bye. Bye.